in the mere stand to the occult idea, determining predestined shape and act, passenger from life to life, from scale to scale, changing his image self from form to form. He regards the icon growing by his gaze and in the one forces the coming God. All the great inhibitions are torn off and broken the intellect's heart and lustrous light. Truth unpartitioned found immense sky room and empyrean vision saw and knew the bounded mind became a boundless light, the fine self mated with infinity. It appears that the divine was compelled to take a mortal birth. The divine was compelled to take a mortal birth. There was the ardent desire, desire in the world, and that desire had to be carried to the Supreme. That desire had to be carried to the Supreme. But who would do that? Who could carry it, the desire to the Supreme? if not he himself. Who could carry it to him if not he himself? It is he who alone can carry the desire to the Supreme, the worst desire to the Supreme. The Divine answers the earth's cry in response to that cry, he takes the mortal birth. In that necessity to carry the world's desire, the Supreme comes as Ashwapati. Ashwapati is the Supreme's representative. He is the delegate of the Lord Creator of the eternal. He is sent to the mortal world. In fact, he is more than a delegate. He is more than an envoy, more than an ambassador. He is in a kind of a manner of speaking, a colonist from immortality. He is the direct action. He is the direct action straight from the Supreme. He is the direct action in the mortal world from the Supreme. He is the Supreme's action in the mortal world. But even in this birth of the Supreme in the mortal world, in his mortal birth, he always keeps the vision of the vast, always focused in his soul. That vision of the vast always remains focused in his soul, although he has taken the mortal birth. Mortality cannot efface it, that vision. It cannot dim it. It cannot get faded in his soul. In fact, it penetrates the veil of darkness. Ashwapati has taken human birth. In identification of the human nature, in oneness with his greatness, in oneness with his thousand foibles, with a thousand feelings and weaknesses. It is in that identification that Ashwapati has taken the human birth. 
with its thousand failings and weaknesses, its inflexible habits. He has identified himself with them. He has accepted them. These are the habits born of ignorance and of mortality. If these habits had to be changed, these must be physically and psychically and spiritually experienced. In order to change the habits, we must experience them in the physical, in the psychic, in the spirit. Ashwapati must experience all the difficulties. If he has come here to solve the difficulties, and indeed he does it. The human in human birth of the divine, the divine in the human birth, the divine's human birth is his participation in this mortality. The divine's human birth is the participation of the divine in this mortality and that he does as Ashwapati. Ashwapati comes, he does yoga tapasya, he does yoga tapasya, the speed of the veil is luminous, his soul is released, it is released from the lower bondages, in lightning succession, he experiences static oneness and dynamic power. At once, the static oneness and the dynamic power he experiences in quick succession. In fact, these become his foundational realizations for his spiritual work. Spirit's immensities descend in him with those realizations. The Spirit's greatnesses invade him, they descend in, they make him as a station for work and activity. Already his journey begins towards divinity. Infinities which had remained conceived in him, those infinities begin to emerge. They were locked in him, they start coming out, emerging. His human strides no longer hold him back, and his days are bright in the light of the splendid sun. He marches. In the days of the splendid sun. Ashwapati stands on a height. From there he can see the reality of existence. He can see the depth and reality of existence. That existence in which things have got to be done. That existence we should be here also towards it, of making that existence a manifest reality here. He has now the secret knowledge, he possesses the secret knowledge to make those realities manifest here. Knowledge is working with the cosmic being and the cosmic being's executive, operative, dynamic power. Ashwapati had a knowledge of soul and nature, of being and power, of presence and force. This quiet and supporting being has lent himself to her. This being lying quiescent. It is he who becomes the support, the Adhara, 
for her work here for the operation of his force in his creation. If there are transcendental nobilities, if these transcendental nobility, nobilities are waiting for manifestation upon earth, then it is she who has to work out the details. It is she who can mani make manifest those transcendental nobilities here. She must see that those nobilities, those splendors are brought into this faulty, ignoble, death-bound creation. He is marching on the path of progress. Ashwapati is marching on the path of progress. Ashwapati hears the echoes of his forward and upward moving steps. He is marching and he already hears the echoes, the steps which he has not taken. His motionless hours get filled with the presence of a nameless marvel. He is being towers into pathless heights. He is free of humanity's hidden masses. He is free of those encumbrances of shadowy things. Ashwapati's ascension to the spirit's heights meets with a response. While he is ascending, there is also a response from above. There is a sudden in rush of might and flame and beauty and ecstasy and sweetness. He experiences these rushing into him as he ascends the heights to spirits, as he climbs the ascending slopes of heaven. During the descent, even into his limbs, into his nerves, into his heart, into his brain, into his vital physical nature itself. His physical has opened itself to the light and force of the invading greatness. His physical has opened itself to the light and force of the invading grace. That grace is established in his physical. The physical Receiving that supplemental light and force in the mind of light. Ashwapati is in possession of that mind of light. If love can be ruthless, then here is a power more ruthless than love. What has ascended, descended in him, here is a power more ruthless than love. And the result is, all that was until now mortal in Ashwapati that has simply been torn out, it has disappeared. There is nothing now mortal remaining in him. And this happened in a moment so short that even death would not have time to disallow it, would not have enough time to disallow it, the entry of that ruthless power entering into him. It now remains there with him forever. Ashwapati has been drawn into the embrace of God. His spirit shines out. It is bland, pure. There is nothing else now in that embrace of God. 
అగ్ని ది ప్యూరిఫయర్ అగ్ని పావక హ్యాడ్ డిసాల్వ్ ది మార్క్ హ్యాడ్ డిసాల్వ్ డిసాల్వ్ ఆల్ ది డ్రాస్ ఇండీడ్ అగ్ని పావక హ్యాడ్ డిసాల్వ్ ది పాస్ట్ భూత్ ఇట్ ఎస్ డిసప్యూర్డ్ Ashwapati's authentic physical can now hold a greater force. A force greater than earth can bear. A new transformation has come on Ashwapati. Ashwapati as an individual has undergone a new transformation. Ashwapati. 